You know what they call Twinkies in Mexico? Los Submarinos. From Family Guy to Wally, -E, Hostess Cakes have made their mark in movies and pop culture as being a sugary favorite that never seems to disappear. So grab something sweet as we dig into the top 10 untold truths of Hostess Snacks. I have done nothing wrong, ever. The secret behind the squiggle. <laughs> Keep talking. Ever wondered why there's a white squiggle of icing across each and every Hostess cupcake? The change actually came along in 1950 when Hostess exec Doc Rice decided to add a creamy filling to their chocolate cakes. That's a genius move. Thank you. Hostess cupcakes had existed for 31 years prior to this decision as simple chocolate cakes with chocolate icing. But Rice wanted to make them taste even better by adding a filling to the inside that would contrast with the rich chocolate flavor. Alongside this addition, he also decided to add a flourish of icing along the top, with seven squiggles adorning each and every Hostess cupcake. Oh, that's the good stuff. Cupcakes may taste a lot different than Twinkies or Snowballs, but the cream filling added into cupcakes is the same filling that Hostess uses for these other creamy treats. Woody Harrelson wanted healthy Twinkies for Zombieland. If you remember the post-apocalyptic comedy Zombieland, you know that Woody Harrelson's character had a weakness for Twinkies. Well, this Twinkie thing, it ain't over yet. To most people who love to snack on junk food, eating a ton of Twinkies on screen and getting paid to do it sounds like a dream come true. However, Woody Harrelson wasn't excited to eat these famous snacks for the camera. Why? Harrelson doesn't eat dairy or sugar and lives as a vegan, so Twinkies would be infringing heavily on his strict diet. Oh no! That's so sad. He asked instead that the crew for Zombieland make him fake Twinkies out of cornmeal to mimic the texture of Twinkies on camera. Although it's sad to know that the Twinkies eaten in Zombieland were about as fake as the zombies themselves, Harrelson's ability to resist the temptation of Hostess products is pretty admirable. It's like you have this iron will. He even joked after the movie's release about a healthy Twinkie revolution, which we don't think will be happening anytime soon, seeing as health and Twinkies seems to be an oxymoron. Twinkies were originally banana flavored. I mean, it's one banana, Michael. What could it cost? Ten dollars? Twinkies might be known for their puffy, spongy outside and creamy vanilla insides, but these sweet treats were originally intended to taste like bananas instead. In 1930, the man credited with inventing Twinkies, James Alexander Dewar, was working for a company that would later become Hostess Brands, and came up with the idea to inject banana flavored filling into into the bakery's strawberry shortcake molds, seeing as strawberries were out of season at the time and the molds were sitting unused. The Twinkies were sold as banana-flavored treats until World War II, which caused a banana shortage and subsequently forced Dewar to fill these treats with vanilla-flavored cream as an alternative. Which is amazing, I'm not complaining. Despite the switch, Hostess seems to like to acknowledge the banana-flavored roots of their famous Twinkies, with special banana-flavored variants still being widely available in department stores everywhere. They've also come out with alternative flavors for other favorites, with peanut butter ho-hos and white fudge ding-dongs being two of the new additions. We uh, see objects of great beauty and uh, <laughs> we must have them. The Chocodile Craze. Oh my God, these Chocodiles? These Chocodiles, Haley, oh my God. If you're from the East Coast, you may not be familiar with Chocodiles. They're essentially a simple Twinkie that has been smothered in chocolate. Hostess stopped production of these sweet treats in their East Coast factories in the early 1990s, making them available only to customers living on the other side of the country. Since they're now being made only in select factories on the West Coast, Chocodiles have been sought after by people online for years now, who claim that this chocolatey version of the Twinkie is even better than the original. What I wouldn't give. One more chocodile. Though the only difference between these and original Twinkies is the chocolate coating the outside, super fans of the chocodile say that the extra layer locks in the moisture of the cake. 
making it taste soft and delicious when you bite into it. Knowing how high the demand is for chocodiles, eBay sellers have been known to sell them online for outrageous prices. It makes sense to seek out the real thing, but you're probably better off making a DIY batch of chocodiles instead of paying an astronomical price for a single tiny snack. Sheesh, do I have to do everything myself? Snowball Secret Snowballs have amassed a dedicated fan base, with many saying that they are the best in Hostess's lineup of snack cakes. A snowball is a chocolate cake with creamy filling coated with marshmallow and coconut flakes. In other words, complete sugar overload. Sugar. It's a block of sugar. Snowballs came about after World War II, when rations for flour and sugar were more generous and when people were hunting down a sugar fix to celebrate the end of the war. It makes sense, considering that snowballs may very well be the most sugar-packed item Hostess has to offer. Although they look completely different than any snack cake on the market, snowballs are not as unique as they may appear. Aside from the marshmallow coating and the coconut flakes, you're essentially biting into an upside-down version of a regular Hostess cupcake. <laughs> Hostess must have used cupcakes as the base for snowballs as a means to cut costs and make production a little easier. But being aware of this company's secret makes the concept of snowballs just a little less exciting than if they were a completely unique snack on Hostess's menu. Even though they may not be as wild and unique as everyone expected, no one can deny that we've all craved the sweet, coconutty joy of a snowball ball in the midst of a rough breakup or a Netflix binge. You deserve a little comfort food. They've caused some sugary scandals. We all know Hostess cakes are tasty treats that many people would go out of their way to get their hands on, but this scandal managed to take it a bit too far. Come too far. Come too far? We haven't come too far, Lynn! In 1986, a Minneapolis City Council candidate named George L. Belair was accused of bribing people to vote by serving them Twinkies, Ho-Hos, and other Hostess desserts. Twinkie. You don't need it. You don't need it, man. You do need a yodel, though. This was considered a dirty trick by the Fair Campaign Practices Act, which ended with Belair actually getting arrested for his little scheme. He was later released and pled not guilty, but we can't help but wonder why he seemed to be conveniently passing out snack foods during his campaign to a group of eligible voters. Okay, I see what you're doing. Bribing a person with food instead of money makes it harder to pinpoint whether serving them a delicious snack was a simple act of kindness or part of some sort of foul play. So it makes sense that Belair would want to use Hostess cakes as a means to get his way. Twinkies came from the Depression. Hey, take it from me, buddy. It's gonna be darkest just before the dawn. It might seem odd to think about the history of an unassuming snack cake, but the story of how Twinkies came to be is actually a pretty interesting one. Hostess was already in business in 1930, with their cupcakes having already been sold for over a decade. However, bakery manager James Dewar wanted to expand Hostess's selection and branch out into other snacks. We can do better. We can do so much better. With the Great Depression harming the economy, he needed to come up with a treat that would be inexpensive for Hostess to make. Eventually, Dewar came up with the genius idea to combine a vanilla sponge cake with a sweet filling. I mean, he's like a genius. Selling packages of two sponge cakes for just a nickel. Because Twinkies didn't cost much to make, it meant that Hostess could sell them for cheap to customers who may not have had a lot of money at the time, allowing them to enjoy something sweet during a dark and uncertain time. It's good to know that Twinkies were as good of a pick-me-up in the Depression as they are in the present day. There's a Guinness World Record for Twinkies. If you thought eating an entire box of Twinkies in one sitting was impressive, prepare to be outmatched. As of right now, the Guinness World Record for most Twinkies consumed in one minute is held by Japanese competitive eater Takeru Kobayashi, who ate 14 of the snack cakes in 60 seconds. 
He completed this feat on The Wendy Williams Show in 2012 in front of a live studio audience. If 14 Twinkies doesn't sound like a lot in terms of competitive eating, it's because Kobayashi had to follow the strict guidelines set in place by Guinness World Records. Hey, 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 quit making up rules! He had to eat one Twinkie at a time and show a judge his empty mouth in between each Twinkie. Considering these strict regulations, it's impressive how Kobayashi managed to eat 14 Twinkies in just one minute. Look, I just wanted to show everybody I could perform under pressure. With that in mind, it's no wonder that he's famous in Japan for his impressive feats in the realm of competitive eating. However, there are amateurs on YouTube who have eaten more without these guidelines set in place. If you're interested in falling down the popular internet rabbit hole of watching people eat, you'll find more than enough hostess mukbangs online to watch that may satisfy your sweet tooth with out ingesting all those extra calories. All I want to do for the rest of my life is mukbang. Whatever that is, what is it for heaven's sake? True crime with Twinkies? Silly customer, you cannot hurt a Twinkie. Have you ever said you'd kill for a Twinkie, Snowball, or other hostess snack? Ironically enough, Twinkies have been involved as one of the main elements in a murder case. In 1979, politician Dan White used what is now widely known as the Twinkie defense after being accused of murdering San Francisco supervisor Harvey Milk. White mentioned to the court that Milk's murder was caused by the sugar high that came with eating too many Twinkies. Ah, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. You might think this sounds ridiculous, but the jury actually believed this excuse and ended up convicting White of voluntary manslaughter instead of murder, and was only sentenced to seven years behind bars. What? It's a disgrace. This lenient sentence sparked outrage among San Francisco's gay community, who supported Milk as both a politician and a gay man. Seeing as White was also said to be opposed to same-sex marriage, it makes sense for the community to be angry about his charges being reduced. Though Milk's murder was a tragedy, it's still incredible to think that his killer used something as seemingly innocent as Twinkies to defend himself in court, making it one of the most fascinating and infamous cases of the 20th century. Seeing as the Twinkie defense was definitely not the best way to advertise these snacks, we can't help but wonder how the people working at Hostess were feeling when all of this was happening. Hostess went bankrupt. In terms of money, we have no money. It may seem unbelievable that a company known for making irresistible snacks has gone through a lot of financial hardship, but Hostess has seen its fair share of rough times during its time as an established baking company. A large amount of debt in 2012 led to Hostess executives cutting employees' wages to save money, which angered many, seeing as factory workers weren't paid very much in the first place. You despicable. Sticks and stones, love. Along with union strikes that attempted to protect workers from exploitation, Hostess items were taken off the shelves for a total of seven months. However, they ended up getting bought out for $400 million, and the new direction managed to put Hostess cakes back in grocery stores. In recent years, it seems things have turned around for Hostess. Sales are up, with Hostess raking in a net revenue of nearly $800 million in 2017. Not too shabby, huh? We've got more. Just tap that screen for another great video, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad.